Greetings viewers! This video is a response to Ira Millman's 2011 article, Five Moral Arguments Against the DREAM Act. The DREAM Act, you may recall, was meant to extend legal residency to unauthorized immigrants who were brought into the country as children. I love talking about morality and moral systems. In my circle of friends, I'm the guy who is constantly being linked to trolley problem memes and scenes from The Good Place, so I was especially intrigued by this essay. In my experience, arguments against legal residency for this group usually don't focus on morality, instead they take a pragmatic angle. Yes, yes, granting legal status would alleviate a lot of human suffering and undo a great deal of injustice, but we just can't do it for one reason or another. So it's a special treat for me to consider the idea that it would be immoral to legalize the residency of dreamers. Now, focusing on moral arguments does mean that this response will be short on citations. After all, I still haven't found the peer-reviewed study that proves what's morally right and morally wrong. These will simply be my own moral judgments on the arguments as presented. I've trimmed some sentences here and there for time, but the full short article is linked in the info bar and I encourage you to read it to make sure I'm not misrepresenting anything. Alright, enough time on the caveats, let's jump right in. 1. The DREAM Act fulfills the parent's principal reason for breaking the law in the first place. Ask the typical illegal alien why he or she came to the United States illegally, and invariably the answer is, I wanted to do better for my family. This is a perfectly rational and understandable response, but not a justification for violating the law. In essence, what the DREAM Act does is provide the parents precisely what they sought when they brought their kids illegally into the United States, a green card, and all the benefits that America has to offer. My gut response to this argument is, so what? Neither in morality nor in law are we obligated to prevent the goal of a bad act strictly because a violation was committed to achieve it. If I speed in order to make it to a job interview, am I legally barred from getting that job? If I park illegally in order to buy groceries, am I legally required to go without groceries? This kind of moral logic also leads to bizarre conclusions when we recall that there are many reasons why immigrants might want to come to the United States. For example, fleeing an unsafe homeland. If the goal of immigrants was to help their family escape from violence, does this mean we are morally obligated to make their children unsafe simply because safety was their goal? This doesn't seem to follow at all. Next argument. Two. The DREAM Act would touch off an even greater wave of illegal immigration. Because the DREAM Act is being marketed as a moral imperative, as opposed to a more general amnesty, which is sold as bowing to reality, it comes with an absolute assurance that it will be repeated. If we have a moral imperative to provide amnesty to the current population of people who were brought here as kids, <coughs> won't we have the same moral imperative for the next generation of people who arrive under similar circumstances? This objection seems to me to be more about how the DREAM Act is marketed, you know, is the DREAM Act a moral imperative, rather than whether it would be moral to implement it. But, to still mend this argument a little, it's an argument from bad consequences. It's willing to judge the morality of our current actions, granting legal residency, based on what other people will do in response, a supposed increased wave of illegal immigration. But I can roll with that, I'm pretty consequentialist. And if the suffering caused by allowing the DREAM Act to pass was great enough, then I would agree that it would be immoral to pass it, even if we're basing this on what future people will do. Even granting this, this argument seems to fail for two big reasons. Firstly, another future wave of illegal immigration doesn't seem to cause more suffering to people than withholding legal status from millions does, not by a long shot. Immigration per se generally greatly relieves suffering. Secondly, it's worth pointing out that waves of illegal immigration don't actually respond much to legalization historically. Economic opportunity is by far the more important driver. I'm going to read this next one a little more slowly and in full. 3. The DREAM Act absolves illegal aliens of their fundamental responsibilities as parents. There is a fundamental principle that parents are responsible for the consequences that their actions and choices have on their kids. Unfortunately, children inevitably pay a price when parents make bad decisions or break laws. The DREAM Act carves out a single exception to this universal tenet of the social contract. The message it sends is that if you violate the U.S. immigration law, American society is responsible for fixing the mess you created for your kids. What the... I, I, I don't... I mean, this argument seems to agree that it is unfortunate that children pay a price when their parents make bad decisions. So why require it? I'm especially baffled by this line. 
the Dream Act carves out a single exception to this universal tenet of the social contract? What the heck kind of social contract are you reading? We must ensure that children suffer when their parents make mistakes? In what sense is that part of our social contract? Your mother was a thief, and so we must make sure that you pay a price. Yes, it's unfair and unfortunate, but we have to do it. It's what we all agreed to. All of our laws are like this. We can't make an exception for you. Finally, even if you are convinced that children should pay a price for their parents' actions, these immigrants have already paid a price. So-called dreamers have had decreased employment opportunities, decreased income, less access to education, and the ever-looming threat of deportation hanging over their heads for most of their lives. Aren't those bad effects of what their parents did? Next argument. Four, the absence of a reward or benefit is not the same as a punishment. Dream Act proponents repeatedly argue that by not granting legal status to targeted beneficiaries, we are essentially punishing children for the sins of their parents. This is an absolutely specious claim. By no stretch of the imagination are the children of illegal aliens being punished. Not rewarding the legal residents and expensive college tuition subsidies is simply withholding benefits to which they never had any entitlement in the first place. This argument is not an argument for the immorality of the DREAM Act. It's more a moral defense of the status quo. But even so, really? Withholding legal status from someone who lives here sure seems like a punishment. And if you don't believe me, just imagine if legal status was withheld from your own children. Would you really say that this would not be a punishment? If we passed a law saying that redheads would no longer be granted the right to vote when they reached the age of 18, could we really argue that no harm has been done, since this was merely withholding a privilege rather than actively punishing? Even if you think this distinction is morally meaningful, granting legal residence is largely not a positive reward itself, but the absence of punishment, namely of being deported, or fined, or imprisoned, or fired, etc. Arguing against legal residence is by definition an argument for the right of the government to carry out these active punishments. 5. Adults have the obligation to do the right thing, even if their parents have done the wrong thing. Society glorifies people who do what is right, especially when doing what is right comes at some significant cost. Yes, many would-be Dream Act beneficiaries have been dealt a bad hand by their parents. As difficult, even unfair as it may seem, upon reaching adulthood they have the responsibility to obey the law. When, for example, Jose Antonio Vargas proclaims on the pages of the New York Times magazine that he knowingly engaged in illegal activities in order to remain and work in the United States illegally, he became culpable in his own right. While he and others like him may be more sympathetic than the people who committed the predicate offense, their situation does not excuse their own illegal acts. So this argument seems to say it would be immoral to grant these people legal status based on their own illegal acts. Firstly, wouldn't this be directly addressed by requiring recipients to pass a criminal background check? Because this is already in the DREAM Act. Secondly, this objection seems easily dismissed by pointing out that if you believe someone like Mr. Vargas has committed acts that disqualify them from legal status, then that disqualification should be applied to that person, not to the general group that this person belongs to. Thirdly, as I hope to address in future videos, withholding legal residency is not justified, even if you could show that all dreamers are criminals. And then very politely he came to me and said, Mr. Vargas, I don't understand how you think you can just get a driver's license from the state of Oregon when you're not supposed to. Like, if I did that, I'd be in jail. Like, do you think you're better than me? People like me get a license because, you know, we got to drop off the kids to school. We have to get groceries and we have to go to work. It's a punishment so draconian that we apply it to almost no citizen criminals. And it's worth taking a moment to consider why that is. Finally, even if you believe that all dreamers are criminals and that criminals generally should not have legal residency, this doesn't make granting legal residency immoral. When a police officer pulls a driver over for speeding, the officer is within their rights to issue a ticket. If they instead issue a warning, has the officer committed an immoral act? It doesn't seem so. In conclusion, I don't see how any of these five arguments hold water, especially compared to the suffering caused by deliberately keeping such a large group of people stateless. Over and over again in history, we have seen the problems caused by having a group of people be entirely within the power of a state, but without rights in that state. Stateless peoples, as a natural consequence of being without rights, suffer. 
And in the United States, this suffering is needless and unjustified. To promote it is therefore immoral. Thank you for your time.